Blessings to your friend. This is Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to minister into your life each and every time we get this opportunity. I want you to share this, to call somebody, text somebody, let somebody know that this broadcast is on the air. You know, friend, we do not take for granted every opportunity we have to minister into your life. We know something will be said, something will be seen that will truly inspire you to continue to live for God. Stay tuned in. God has great things to get ready to minister into your heart. The Bible said, And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. Man, I can preach that probably all week. Because somebody have, some people have the book of the Lord, but they just won't read it. But here he says, I found the book of the Lord. And we ought to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, have I took the time to find myself reading the book of the Lord? I was talking in adult class this morning and telling God's people that so many times people have been offended and mad at me when all I did was just read. And sometimes people want you to take their word for it, but you have a right to say if the Bible does not say it or does not give insight on it, then I don't have to receive it. Now, in saying that, don't stand your ground on foolishness because the Bible does not say thou shalt wash thy dishes. But the wisdom tells me if I don't wash my dishes, they're going to be dirty. Come on, say amen. The Bible does not say thou shalt put unleaded gas in your gas tank. But I mean, in a sense, that we have to understand you have a right to take care of the take concern for your own soul. That I can't be a human garbage can for people to dump anything in me. So he says, the book of the law was found, and Shaphan read it. Look your neighbor and say, you got to read it. Let's go to verse 10, because I'm trying to move on for time. And Shaphan, the scribe, showed the king, saying, now notice Shaphan is a scribe. Somebody say scribe. And today is one of those days when I preach Old Testament, these things are written for our learning. I'm going to drop a few revelations, so you can't afford to be sitting by somebody going to be tapping you all service. Because, see, you miss things, and you can't afford to zone out and start playing around. Because there's no purpose to come to God's house and not get any substance. But notice Shaphan, in verse number 10, is a scribe. A scribe was people that had the understanding of the things of God. They were like what we call theologians, people who understood the law. And notice Shaphan, the person who understands the law, now he shows it to the king. A lot of times we can't show other people things about God because when God give us the book, we don't read it and we don't understand it for ourselves. So we can't pass it down to anyone else. And oftentimes there's people we work around, people we see on a daily basis who really need help. And often we send them away because we have nothing to give them when they come to us. But once you indulge in the word of God, I wish I had a little help. Once you give yourself over to God's word and that word begin to consume your life, you can give it to somebody else. And you, brother and sister, whoever you may be, you may have came in today empty as you can be. That's why you let God fill you with his word today. Because who knows what you're going to face as you start your week tomorrow or Tuesday, whatever day it's going to be. And you can't pour out what you haven't let God pour in. Amen? So the scribe gives it to the king. And he says, Hilkiah, the high priest, delivered me a book. Notice the priest gave it to the scribe, and now the scribe giving it to the king. And that's how God works. God will give you some, not for you to hold it and be proud before you can pass it down to other folks you connected with. Amen? Amen. Now the Bible said, and Shaphan read it before the king. Verse 11, follow me now. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he read his clothes. Now, back in the Old Testament, when you see people rent their clothing, it's a sign of humility. It's a sign that, God, I'm coming before you humble. And the reason why that it's a sign of humility because they're taking off the covering, and it's a sign of saying, God, I'm not going to hide my true self from you. And that's what we ought to do in the spiritual sense. When the word of God is being given to us, rather than keep trying to cover up like God don't see it, you ought to say, God, when your word comes into my life, it causes me to really show you who I truly am. Amen. Because there's a lot of people hear the word of God, and they get mad and upset, and they cover up things. God show you how you got an attitude problem. You put on more clothing. No, take them off. 
God show you how you got some things in your life that's causing you to walk in the hindrance. And rather than reveal and say, God, you found me for who I truly am, sometimes we leave our church mad at the preacher, mad at his wife. You even mad at my five-year-old hope. And that's not the intent of the word. Tell somebody that's not the intent of the word. Oh, uh, you talking to a Catholic. Talk to somebody else. Say, that's not the intent of the word. The word comes to show you who you truly are. And I'm going to tell you something. When you get to a real house of God where people are preaching by the anointing, oftentimes you can think that preacher throwing out at you, and sometimes that preacher don't know nothing about you, but the Holy Spirit using him to tell you all about yourself. Yeah. Oh, God, I wish I had some saints in here that would say, Lord, I thank you for telling me about me. Because, see, this generation now, we come to church and want God to talk about everybody else but us. But God going to have some men and women that's going to have a backbone and say, when the book of the Lord is given to me, I'm going to read it. I don't care mama and daddy, grandma, whoever people is. They need to hear the same word because the same word that helped me is the same word that will help them. Amen? Amen? So here he rent his clothing. He humbles himself. How many people be honest? Sometimes we hear the word of God, we don't always humble ourselves. We go on what I call a hiatus. Can't nobody find you for a while. You have to calm down. Baby, let me tell you something. Whenever you get back home, the word's still going to stay in. Stop running from your deliverance. I feel like preaching here. Stop running from the power of God and think because you ain't showed your face in church that God have not showed his face in your life. God will find you while you out of God's will. Hello, Jonah. You may be going a different direction, and God will still find you and say, there's no running, there's no hiding from me. What I'm really trying to do is get you to rent your clothing, to stop being a cover-up. Y'all ain't talking to me. Ain't you tired of cover-up, saints? I don't care about you being mad. It's what I come to preach. Ain't you tired of cover up men and cover up women who's trying to cover up the real deal? Acting holy, acting anointed, acting like they full of love, acting like they care, acting like they seeking God. Well, the act is up, and I come to open my mouth and say it. The act is up. God not looking for actors. He's looking for real men and real women. And there are some of you in here, you tired of folks acting, and not just of them. You said, God, I'm not going to be an actor this year. I'm going be real. Deliver me from the act. I get tired of the humming and the mumbling and the groaning and people just know how to preach. Knowing how to preach don't make you anointed. Because you got a good musician on me and you're anointed. Y'all ain't talking to me. Because you can prophesy and say nothing. Come out, come out. Give me some word. I need more just come out, come out. What am I coming out of? I want the real thing. Come on, somebody. You ever notice in a natural sense you can buy some things to substitute, but there's other stuff you can tell the taste difference? So you can buy fake salt. That's okay. But when you start getting Dr. Toppers, y'all ain't talking to me, and Dr. Thunders, y'all ain't saying that. It just don't taste like Dr. Pepper. And sometimes we're trying to substitute the real thing. I'm trying to be like a spiritual Jezebel. See, God spoke to me about witchcraft in the church. And sometimes what we fail to realize, we can be sitting right among a bunch of witchcraft and don't even know what's going on. Jezebel is not just about makeup. Can I make myself at home here? But well, I hate to sound rough. I'm going to it anyway. I feel something here. And Jezebel is more than just about somebody trying to steal your husband. There's a lot of Jezebel saints. And let me say this to help you women. There's some Jezebel men too who know how to hide their really self and hide who they really are. And they put on what I call a paint face. They act like they something they're not. They act like God told I don't know what he did, and I'm getting to the point now that I'm almost getting sick and tired of being sick and tired, and God spoke to me and said, you just where I want you at. You got a place in your life right now where you want the real thing, and it's not just me, it's some of you here. I'm sick of fake saints. I'm sick of fake holy people. I'm sick of people acting like they're something they're not. God, I want to be real. We wonder why this generation is not one, because this generation see no power. They see folks in church acting one way, and I outside the church they live in another way but God is raising up some people and you ought to tell the devil I'm going to be in the number he's raising up some people that when they hear the word of God they're not going to sit there and be stubborn they're not going to be rebellious they're not going to sit there and try to start a church outside of the church because they disagree but they're going to say God here I am I'm in my closet I feel the Holy Ghost here I'm humbling myself again I'm bowing down to your word again can I preach a few minutes? I won't be long. I'm going fishing. Watch this. 
The Bible said, verse number 12, And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Akbar the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asaiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go ye, inquire of the Lord. For who? Amen. Wait a minute. The king didn't say, I'm mad at you. I'm changing my membership. No, no, he said, I need some more of this right here. The word of God then got some stirred up in me. Now I want to know more about this God. See, see, what happens now? People get stirred when they hear a word, but they don't get stirred up to seek God. They get stirred up to go and start talking about the things of God. They get stirred up and start gossiping. But this king wasn't gossiping. He said, I got to know more about this God. I see how God's a healer. Go inquire about these healings. I see how God's a deliverer. Go inquire about this deliverance. I don't know about some of you, but when I was growing up, the devil fought my mind so heavily and tried to make me second guess God and, and tried to make me think that there was nothing to speak of in tongues and, and nothing to healings and miracles, but there was something in my heart that was just kind of curious. I said, I want to know about this God. Surely everybody ain't fake. Surely every prophet ain't prophet lying. Surely every apostle ain't fake. And I started inquiring about God. And when I started inquiring about him, I found out what David said. When you taste and see that God is good, he'll show you every time he is good. And now some of you here today, can I preach a few minutes here? You're inquisitive about God. You've been hearing about prophecy. You've been hearing about the anointed. And God said, I'm going to send you to SOM North Little Rock because I'm going to give you a taste test. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Tell him, say, everybody ain't fake. Look at him, say, everybody ain't false. Tell him, that's some real people huh? that's trying to do something for God. And that's what you ought to say to God. It don't mean something wrong with you, but you can't find it unless you seek for it. You ought to be like the king and say, I'm inquiring of this God. I know I should be delivered, and I've heard folks say God can deliver, but today is my day, and I'm going to inquire God to see if he will deliver. Can you say yes? Hallelujah. Can I preach a few minutes? Now listen to me very, very carefully. He said, go inquire the Lord for me. But wait a minute here. Here's a sign of care and true Christianity. Not just for me and for my children. I'm sorry, my people. Because not only is it good for me, but it's good for others. And since I'm a king, my job is to look out for the people. And why is it so important for us to realize he's a king? A king was a ruler. And you not, may not be a king, but you are the ruler of your home. And we wonder what's wrong with children, because oftentimes the parents don't inquire of God. Oftentimes the parents can just get in the habit of going to church, but there's no curiosity to really serve this God we hear about. And I didn't bring you here to bash you today. Don't you dare look at me like that. But I got to tell you something. It's time for you to give off that blessed assurance and say, I want to know who God really is. I need to be a God to my family, a God in my home. I want to be like Joshua so I can say for me in my house. It's all right, though. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And sometimes we try to rule something rather than let God take the rule. And that's what God was showing the king. You might be a king, but you ain't never hiding above me. And sometimes there's a spirit of witchcraft that make us think we got control. But let me tell you something today. You better get out your own way, honey, because you can't control everything. Sometimes there's spirits that's warring against our mind. And we acting like we got it under control. But every night you're torment, you feel pressure, you feel distress. I come to tell you, when you give it to God, God know what to do, and God know how to do it. Say yes. yes. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm giving this control back to God. Watch this, watch this. He said, go inquire the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah. Oh, see, sometimes we just want to praise, but we don't want to inquire. 
Church is more than just how good you can dance. Church is more than just a mime show. Excuse me for being so blunt. I'm sick of mimers and people not living. No, we need more than a mime. We need more than a dance. No, we need some living right. And that's what you ought to say. It's not just about how cute I can dance. It, oh, y'all know you ain't gonna talk to me now, see. It's more than just how much I can praise him. I need to do some living behind this. My Bible said, not in him we dance, but in him we live. Look to somebody and say, neighbor, God looking for a lifestyle. It's your life he died for. It's your life he woke. It's your life he concerned about. Awkwardness of passion, people. And oftentimes people wonder why sometimes we don't minister a lot in our own church to our, our own members because sometimes we don't want people to think we're trying to make these things up because of conversations that's been had. But God's allowing you to be tested and to be tried right now. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I had some praying people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And God's uh, setting you up for your ministry to come forth in a lot of areas where you're not just going to preach it and speak it, but it's going to come from experience. Hallelujah. There's a lot of things you have dealt with, some things you've kept within yourself, and I see you have talked and prayed to God throughout the years concerning some stuff. There's been some things said to you that have really tried to affect your mind. I even see prayers being made to God. God, I'm trying to trust you, God. I'm just trying to believe you, but God, I just, I just, just don't seem like you're coming through here. I'm just wondering where you're at, what you're doing here. You know what I'm talking about? And the Lord told me to encourage you that he heard your prayers. I wish somebody get happy in this little church. Hallelujah. And God told me to tell you that he's going to work some things in your favor. It's been some mockery made against you too and some mockery made against the, the things God's doing in your life. But God's going to shut the mouth of some of those mockers and scorners too. Now I'm not trying to embarrass you. You haven't told you haven't told me this. We didn't get together and say we was gonna do this out in the front and try to put on a good show here. But God's even gonna restore um, He's gonna make the relationship between you and your mother greater too. Because it's still like a standstill and a stigma there. And she loves you, you love her, but it's been like a stigma and like a, it's been like a, it's like a heaviness there. You know what I'm talking about? And God's going to break that yoke. He's going to destroy that yoke. It's been like a, some misunderstandings that have tried to cause like a, like a complex there throughout the years. Glory. I wish somebody get happy in this house. And God told me to tell you, he's with you, woman. Every step of the way. He's heard your prayers. And actually the other day you used your faith. You said, God, I'm not going to, I'm just going to use my faith. I know you're going to come through. And God said, because you passed his faith test, the blessing is on your life. Watch this. I ain't going to be too long here. I know I'm straight up the devil. But he said, go inquire Lord for the people. And he said, for all Judah, but do you ever say everybody? No, no, no. What is he inquiring? He said, concerning the words. Oh, God. Who oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Concerning the words. Oh, come on, follow me in the book here. See, your feelings get you in trouble sometimes. Concerning the words, that's what? Wait a minute. When last time you say, God, I'm not just going to take the preacher word for it. I'm going to try that word. You said, if I seek you, I'll find you. You said, if I ask, it shall be given. When the last time you stopped asking God for houses and money and say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. When the last time you started asking God for another job and say, God, deliver me from this drug. Deliver me from this alcohol. I know people don't want to talk to me now, but this nation is in a mess. And it's in a mess because it's full of covered up people. People acting like they're happy and they feel like I'm in suicide. But you can go inquire God and say, God, you said you did not want me to die, but 
you want me to live, I'm inquiring of you. Deliver me from suicide. Deliver me from depression. And there's some of you in here today, you're going through hell in your mind. You're laying down at night, and there's demons fighting you, and the worst thing that happens, you go to cold dead churches, and the pastor ain't got no power. The people ain't got no power. Let me tell you something. It's power in here, because God is in here, and God wants to deliver you. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God want to free you. God want to deliver you if you believe and say yes. Who yes. sit down. I'm trying to move fast. I feel something stirring in me. But the Bible said, it said, concerning the words of the book that is found, for great, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us. And I may seem like weird, odd, crazy preacher, but all I do is read. See, we want messages now that tickles our ears. But you need preachers now to stand up and be a man and be a woman of God and tell people that God is not pleased with sin. I'll say it again. I'm not afraid to lift my voice. God is not pleased with sin. And it doesn't mean God throwing you away. But sometimes God is telling you that so you can throw that sin away. Yeah. How many of y'all ever, ever ate some food and had trash in your home? The rest of y'all aliens? How many of y'all ever had some trash in your home? It ain't nothing wrong because trash got in your home. But something is awfully wrong with you. Don't you know, get deep. I'm talking to you. If you keep that trash in there. Because when trash is everybody know it. It's stinky. Yeah. It attracts maggots. Yeah. It don't smell good. It don't look good. And trash will dump, damage other things and make it trashy. Yeah. Sometimes God trying to show us as good as a house as you are. There's some trash they got in there. And my Bible says, I believe in the book of James, that every house, every house, there's vessels to honor, and there's vessels to dishonor. He said some of earth and some of wood, but he said if a man will purge himself of these things, then he will be a vessel of honor. He will be a house meet for good works. And that's what the devil's job is, is to make us think we're okay when we're not. And here we see the king that gets imprisoned about the word of God. And just because he hears the word... Just because he listens to the word. Now he sees, God, you ain't pleased with something in my life. How many times we're pleased with stuff that God's not pleased with? And oftentimes it's good people. And God said, you're not a bad person. But if you just read, if you just listen, come on, look your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you're quiet. But look at him and say, God see you over there. Now, I'm not picking at you, but look how it's like some zap, some out of the building when I start talking about sin. Because this generation want to come and make everybody feel good. God going to get your haters. Turn around three times, your house is coming. <laughs> how about amen? And God may get your haters. And God may get you a house to go with it after he gets your haters. <laughs> But God still requires lifestyle. He still requires us to follow what the books say. There's a danger I've seen in the church for years. How we sit in church and hear what God say, but yet we refuse to obey what God say. And this is why witches is comfortable in the church now. See, that's why witches get comfortable in the church. Because people have no power no more. We sit there, we babysit witchcraft. And the reason why we babysit they witchcraft, because we babysit ours. I ain't talking to me. Uh -uh. I, I know it ain't right, but I'm going to do it anyways. And I'm going to control God and tell God to bless me while I'm in it. No, no, no. This king said, whether I'm a king or not, I can't give a command greater than God's command. I have to humble myself. I have to tell the truth and realize God's wrath is against me. Not because I'm a bad person. But because somewhere I strayed from the book. Can you not see how this nation has strayed from the book? Yes. Homosexuality has become such a common thing. Some of y'all think something wrong with me when I talk about it. Wow. You think I've lost it when I preach on it. Wow. You got so-called gay bishops. How are you a bishop? Are you gay? Amen. Come on. 
And some of y'all look at me crazy and go in their line and tell me, I pray for me. I do. You better not let them touch you. <laughs> what you transferring? I hear you. Don't be judging. Don't be judging. I ain't judging. The word is judging. Next time y'all go to the grocery store and get an apple and they got a bruise, I hope to God I see you. I'll say, don't be judging. Don't be judging. <laughs> get that bad apple. Don't be judging. <laughs> Judgment is according to the truth. Yes. You can tell when something is damaged. Yes. You can tell when you're hearing stuff and it ain't making sense with your spirit. You can tell when something is God. You can tell when folks are phonies, when they're fake, when they're hacking. And God told me, I'm bringing a real thing back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm y'all sitting down and say, God, we getting witchcraft out the church this year. Hallelujah. I see it all the time. I know people want me to move on, but I say something I feel led to. I see people sometimes in service trying to control my service. Looking at me crazy. Look all you want to. I look right back and preach the word. Hello, everybody. This is Minister Jay Timms. I'm with Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries here at Souls Outreach Ministries. And I'm just here wanting to invite y'all all to come and join us. Come be with us this Sunday. We are going to be honoring our chief apostle, Marcus Stevenson Sr., along with our elect lady, Victoria Stevenson. And y'all, it's their appreciation service. And we just want to give honor where honors are Honor, where honor is due. So we want y'all to come and be with us. This Sunday, we are having the service at 11 a.m. in Jacksonville at 2311 Green Acres Drive, Jacksonville, Arkansas, 11 a.m. Y'all, God is going to do some great and mighty things. So just come and be with us. Help us as we show our honor and love to our overseer and our elect lady. And we want y'all to be a part of that because what we give out, God will always give back to us. Friend, I'm so thankful that you got a chance to hear the word of the Lord, to see the signs and wonders of God during this telecast. We prayerfully hope that this was not the last time that you stay connected with our ministry. Just like you was blessed during this broadcast, we truly believe that you will continually be blessed if you will continue to watch us each and every week on this same station at this same time. You know, friend, if you look on the screen, there's a number you can call. We want to pray with you for any prayer requests you may have. Anything you believe in God for, we want to connect our faith with you. And more importantly, if there's a lack of salvation in your life, if you feel far from God, we want you to understand that the purpose of our ministry is to build your faith and to have you walking closer with God. Feel free to go to the phone right now. You can go to our website as well. You can connect with us through social media. Don't let this be a one-time event. Stay connected with us as this is a God-given connection. And as we go off the air, we want to remind you of the love of God and the hope of Christ. Blessings to you on behalf of Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries.